at D23, we were all treated to the first trailer for Snow White. And I know we were all excited to see it. And my eyes are still recovering from that. That's I had to wear these sunglasses to watch that trailer because it was it made Ghostbusters 2016 it look like a Zack Snyder movie. It was possibly the most colorful thing I've ever seen in cinema uh, and not in a good way. And yeah, I guess I'm curious to hear what you guys thought about it. Has it redeemed Snow White? Is it going to make everyone want to <laughs> go watch it now? Do, do, you want me to go into, do you want me to go into parody mode here? Because I can be like, yes, it's uh, cool. it's just... whatever, whatever way you want to approach it, man. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was bad. That's <laughs> I, I I'm just shocked that they were only. I know it's supposed to be a teaser, but it um, it seemed like there wasn't even enough for a teaser in the trailer. It it, it feel it felt like they just pieced together what little they could. And I would assume that that's mostly because of all the reshoots and re-edits and everything that they had to do. And they're probably still working on it. I would imagine so, yeah. Because it was delayed by a full year uh, after the backlash against it. And wow, yeah. Um, it's amazing that a star of a movie can... Well, it wasn't entirely Rachel Zegler's fault. Like I think she was probably fed some really crap um, talking points from her PR people. Um, but that combined with the the leaked set photos, the the um, the whole like revamp for modern audiences angle, the the fact that they don't even have dwarves in it anymore apparently, although now they do mysteriously because uh, they didn't want to offend the, Peter Dinklage. I, I, I miss mean, the baristas. I miss the magical baristas. Well, yeah, I mean, even that probably looked better than these horrifying creations. It's like watching a bunch of rubber mannequins like waddling about the set. Like it's so uncanny and weird um, to see them, especially to see them next to an actual human like Rachel Zegler. Like it just the contrast is so horrifically jarring. I don't, I don't even know what to make of it. Oh, yeah, and then I is it just me or does the whole thing like I don't want to say that it looks like it's covered in pee, so I'm gonna say it gently. It looks like it's like sepia toned for some reason. There's like this weird filter applied to the whole thing too, and I don't know if they were trying to make it feel more vintage so we wouldn't get the whole like modern audience thing, but I feel like we're way past that. There was nothing to me that looked adequate about this. I was losing my mind about the Lord Farquaad haircut. You know, mm. I don't want to dislike Rachel Zegler. That's the haircut is not her fault, but somebody should have done something right there because that was just terrible. The the whole thing, like, because I get the impression, like that that whole set that she was dancing in with dwarves, none of that was actually real. Like, none of that was physically yeah. uh, in existence. It was all just her on a green screen. And I just thought, man, you could have just done this so much more easily if you just got a bunch of actual human dwarf actors to play these characters done it on a real set a real set that was actually physically there yeah with the money they're spending they could build the house easily yeah instead you get this weird uncanny valley crap that it's like you know this actress trying to dance around a bunch of nothingness um, and make it seem like a real dance routine with real people and like everything's composited in afterwards it looks horrific um you know the, the whole problem that they have with uh with Gal Gadot is meant to be the evil, wicked stepmother who's jealous of Snow White's looks. I mean, uh. Snow White, no. Yeah. Well, remember now they're trying to justify it and say that the evil queen, her whole thing is not fairest, as in who's more beautiful. It's fairest, as in who is more like fair. Tomorrow? I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm slightly less problematic than the evil queen, and I don't give a shit who's more fair. I would be more worried that a mirror was telling me. That Rachel Zegler is the better looking one. <laughs> I, I, I might I set have, fire to a kingdom as well. <laughs> I must have missed this person. So they're actually doing fair as in like the moral quality. So like the the evil queen is now trying to be bet, nicer than Snow White. I don't. That's what I keep seeing on like Twitter and Reddit from the people that are defending it because they keep seeing that as a talking point, and they're like, no, no, no. What it means is like, like she's just. I'm like, I don't know. I'm pretty sure she's an asshole and is aware of that. Dude, that's just funny. But I don't, like, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, 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 like, we're gonna well, have to switch it to a moral qualities because no one's gonna believe that the mirror thinks that she's on the couch. Also, it's such a dumb thing because it's like, okay, I can understand in the original 
story, it's like, well, you can't change, like, you're born ugly or you're born beautiful. Like, not much you can do about that, okay? So, like, if you happen to be one way or the other and you're resentful of someone else, you want to take that from them, fine. But if you're resentful of someone who's just nicer than you, that's fully within your ass. environs to, like, <laughs> yeah, you can fix that yourself. Like, that's not something you have to take from someone else. You can try to be a nice hard person. to be nice, but I'm just an asshole. How yeah, do you steal someone's weird, moral quality by murdering them for it? Like that seems a bit <laughs> not really. No, well, gonna work. I'm going to kill you to prove that I'm nicer. God damn it! <laughs> in theory, if a person's dead, they can't be nicer or less nice than you. They're just non-existent at that point. That is that is kind of true. Yeah, <laughs> That's oh, also it's, true. It's, it's real 4D chess you got going on there. It's a strange one. The the problem is as well, right? That that role is going to rely on Gal Gadot really bringing it. As like the vampish sort of uh, <laughs> you know mo you know evil mother-in-law, and I I I love Gal Gadot, I really do. She seems like a lovely person, and damn, she's beautiful. But she does not have that acting ability <laughs> to bring Thank a character you. like that. Thank like, you. She See, is uh, every time I say this on my channel, like the brigade of comments that think that I'm saying it because I'm not as pretty as her. I know the bitch is beautiful. She's the prettiest thing I've ever seen, but she cannot act. That I mean, no. it's it's not the same thing. Um, every time somebody casts her in anything, I think of the Kalel no and that one line of her, and that's I don't even know what movie it was. That she was on a boat and like pouring champagne or some shit, and it was Arrow. just she's not a good actress. So when you look at somebody, I made the comparison in my video, like Angelina Jolie is Maleficent. I yeah. think. Those are not particularly spectacular movies, but I think that she was great in that role in the first one, especially. She was super intense. Gal Gadot cannot do that as the no. evil queen in this movie. I mean, she's playing against garbage, but also, like, come on, I'm sorry, it's not there. No, she she can't. And uh, I, I think, um, what was the movie? It was like the one she was in with Ryan Reynolds and The Red. Rock. Red Notice, yeah. yeah Red Notice. Where yeah. she had to play that sort of femme fatale character and she just didn't have it in her. And I think maybe Wonder Woman sort of fooled a lot of people into thinking that she could act and carry a <laughs> film. And it's like, no, I think she was kind of just playing herself in that, like just a nice person. She had plenty of bad thing. moments for acting in Wonder Woman. I think people liked the movie enough to ignore it. She had a yeah, lot more favor back then. She doesn't anymore. She's completely lost it. Most people agree she's a bad actress now. Yeah. And so I, I think this movie's probably going to expose that because she's going to have to play against type. She's going to have to play the villain, which she's never really done before. And I just, I think that's not going to work so, for her. I, I don't know if it was just for the trailer or if it's going to be for the whole movie, but it almost didn't sound like it was her voice. Or it, it was like that didn't sound like her voice. No, no. it didn't sound I, like her. Either. I'm wondering if they're gonna like they realize that and it, they're just gonna completely voice her over because that would Cause be she's, very interesting. She's got I, I don't know how to describe it. She's got a slightly crackly sort of voice in mm -hmm. real life, um, which is fine. But it's like if there's any kind of moments where she has to project a kind of gravitas, she's gonna struggle to do it. And it, God help her if she has to sing. Like yeah, that's it's, it's mostly because she's always trying to push against her Israeli accent. She's always trying to fight that that accent, and they compensated for it in Wonder Woman by making everybody else use the same accent. Uh, <laughs> <it's> not, <laughs> that, that was so fucking did. funny. It's like it's yeah. easier to make the entire cast speak like Israelis than make uh, <laughs> Elgato you know, speak like anyone else. <laughs> but and, and, but now they can't do that. They have no reason to do that. So that I would not be shocked if they're digitally trying to remove her accent, which would be extremely Ooh. strange. What if they dubbed her? They just like yeah. straight up overdubbed her. The, that could be a thing. I don't know. Um, I was curious as well. Like this, this kind of made me laugh because they leaked some of the performance for "Whistle While You Work." Um, onto social media, right? And so some helpful soul compared it to the original song. And so yeah, I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. Like in the original context of the song, like Snow White gets taken in by the dwarves and she repays their kindness by cleaning up their home for them. You know, like she uses her fucking animal friends somehow to help do it. And it's like a, it's a reciprocal thing. You know, they took her in, they, they, gave her shelter and protected her and so she wants to do something to help them out in the new version however we have a different take on that where she forces them to clean up their own home <laughs> after they've been busy like 
working in the mines all day and literally saving her life. It's like, hey, I've got an extra fucking job for you. You're going to clean up your house now. So I'm just going to play it, actually. Just let let it speak for itself. Now you wash the dishes. Now you wash the dishes. You tidy up the room. You tidy up the room. You clean the fireplace. You clean those cobwebs. And I'll use the broom. And he'll use the broom. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to put this into context. Like, imagine if you saved a, a, a person's life, right? Brought them back to your home, and it's like, okay, you can recuperate here until we figure out what to do. And then they just fucking throw a broom at you and say, like, right, start cleaning, <laughs> bitch. This is, uh, you call this the place to rescue someone? Clean this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's obviously, like, it's a perfect distillation of redoing a, a story for modern audiences and it's purely driven by this idea of like you can't possibly show a woman doing any sort of domestic chores like that's not allowed that would be that'd be Desperate wrong to have guys. someone in that fucking board meeting when they say modern audiences just go but why why maybe we just don't maybe maybe we just do it for old people <laughs> let's try that for one <laughs> let's try it. Or maybe they're like or maybe we recognize in this context he's just trying to do them a favor because they helped her she's helping them it's okay it doesn't mean like all women everywhere have to just fucking confine themselves to a house and be constantly cleaning things it just means this one character is doing this thing in this story and it's okay but like it's been ages oh. since i've seen the original but isn't that supposed to be the moral of the story which is that the queen is ultimately vain and she is obsessed with beauty but actually the thing that takes snow white far in life is that she doesn't regard beauty but she is kind he does things for other people. That's what makes her a worthy character. Yeah. How have yeah. we swapped being kind is more important than being beautiful for it's fine if the slaves are happy. Like that's not yeah. that's not because, a good replacement. Yeah. No, but because now their interpretation of being just and fair is being a leader. Because that's what they talk yeah. like that's what Rachel Ziegler talked about in the original interviews constantly. How she is powerful, she's a leader, she's coming into her power, she's got authority over people. And that's what she does here. She tells the dwarves what to do. She organizes them to like do their own tasks, essentially. So she delegates work to them. That's her. That's what makes her a good person, apparently, ordering people around. That's what I think is so outrageous about this shit. Because look, I mean, speaking as as the one on the panel that has lady parts, even though apparently that <laughs> wouldn't qualify me as a woman in today's year, but. I you can still get knocked up. out by a man in the Olympics if you want to go in for boxing. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> right? But honestly, looking at these things, okay, I wasn't really like a big Disney princess kid growing up. I was like a SpongeBob person, so that should go show you why I am the way that I am. But my point is, is that the whole point of Snow White and these Disney princesses and the moral lessons, right? Because there are moral lessons in these stories. Sure, will we have to see a woman? a girl cleaning, right? Oh my God, how dare you? But the whole fucking point is not the action of cleaning as something as offensive. It is a reciprocation of kindness. It is you scratch my back, you let me into your house. So you know what? Let me do you a favor. You guys were out mining. Let me help you out and do something nice for you. We're not going to put her in a hairnet and have a dwarf come and whip her. It's, it's not some terrible thing that she's doing or being subjected to it is something kind and so in my opinion kindness does not outweigh leadership or independence you can be both you can be a strong independent woman who maybe in a later sequence i don't know shows the dwarf how to clean his own fucking pot but you know what this one time let me help you out i'll do it for you you know and it's this thing where reciprocity no longer exists the lesson for women and girls now is that you need to literally step on everybody around you or you are not worthy as a woman you are not comfortable in your own power you know, there doesn't need to be any love in your life. There doesn't need to be reciprocity to somebody who might be a male. And it's insane to me. These are not the lessons we need to teach people because that just creates narcissistic assholes who don't appreciate anything around them. These stories exist for a reason. And making them for modern audiences, if this is what you're doing, if the modern audience is we're going to have this chick shove a broom into somebody's hand after they've just helped her, then what, then what you're telling me is that the modern audience is... A narcissistic asshole who doesn't feel the need to scratch anybody's back or repay a favor and it's insane regardless of gender it it shouldn't be like that 
No, I agree. And I think there's there's something actually quite powerful about taking a character like Snow White, who is a princess, a person who's born into a position of immense privilege, who probably would never normally have to clean or cook or do anything really for herself um, in the original story to lower herself, I guess, to that level of um, sweeping up and cleaning a house, like a, a very basic place. Um, and and doing that manual work because she she is a good person and she wants to reciprocate the kindness like you say that people have shown her. Um, that is a very strong character trait of a person who doesn't have ego um, and who doesn't see themselves as above a task like that. That is a person who's willing to pitch in and do day to day work even though it's not what they're born into. Whereas, uh, yeah, this this new version just reinforces that idea of like, ah, oh, well, I'm better than that sort of thing, and I don't need to do that. And you, poor person, you can do it for me because I'm going to give you the like that is that is a shit lesson to teach people. That doesn't really that doesn't ring true with the human condition whatsoever. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I watched Snow White problem. semi recently, actually, with Rags and Friggy. We were quite struck by how charming and like. It's such a deep movie, uh, especially considering how fucking old it is. So this this thing that they're making, man, I just just I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> you know what's something? And to that... me, it's just irritating. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I'll go. I'll, I'll, it's going to slightly switch the topic. So go uh, go ahead. Oh okay. Oh, I was just going to add that to me, it's inherently irritating and super hypocritical. I don't know how many of y'all have seen Rachel Zegler's um, Instagram and Twitter. I don't know if she's still with this person, but she's continuously posting about the love and support from a man that she is in a relationship with. And yet she so boldly says this person doesn't need to be saved by the prince. Her co-star could have his scenes cut as any at any time. And I'm like, that's really fucking gross. Because I'm sure if it was the other yeah. way around, everybody would throw a tantrum. You shouldn't say that about somebody who is a fellow artist with you. What the hell is your problem with this princess potentially having a romantic relationship? Don't you have one that you benefit from? Like, goddamn. 